Oh, oh man, young love. Um, I remember at the age, the young, the young age of eighteen, my youth. Um, I went to J.C. Penny to get my girlfriend at the time. Um, and we were only dating a couple months. Nothing like you know. I don't know what the fuck to get, but fun story. Um, her friend that happened to work at the other job with us happened to work at J.C. Penny, and not just work at J.C. Penny. Actually, let me tell you about it. It's not J.C. Penny. It's Macy's. But not only did she work at Macy's, she worked exactly in the area I was happening to look for. So I thought, ah, you know what would be a great idea? Her friend works in the perfume area. She may be able to help the boy out. So you know what? I decide I got this. I go to Macy's. I'm like, hey, fill in the blank name. And she's like, oh, hey. Say, like, hey, you know anything, uh, this lovely lady? That happens also be your quote unquote bitch, as you girls call each other. But then when I call her my bitch in a complimentary way, it, uh, it does not go over well. For some reason. I don't know. Yeah, our bitch. Um trying to trying to get that fragrance of her. She has a very distinct smell. I'm trying to switch it up, you know. A little switcheroo. I'm not even looking, she said. I'm I'm not even joking when I say this. She looks me dead in the face and says, Yeah, I can't help you with that. I'm like, Well, one, even if we don't have a personal situation. Your job is to, by definition, help me. Um, she said, well, no, because that's your job to figure out. You know, and, you know, they're, they're tight n- nittiness. They're very tight. And basically, half their relationship was shitting on everything I didn't do. At the age of 18, didn't have a car. <laughs> didn't exactly have the most experience, which I'm not saying criticism is not fair. I get it. But it's funny how when people have expectations for you at that age, and then now all of a sudden they look at you and they're like, hey, I see you're doing well. You trying to do a little of this, do a little of that? And I'm like, I can honestly know. But whenever you want to pay the $3,000 of rent, be my fucking guest. But not the point here. Um, and the, the audacity. Like, this is helping your friend. My girlfriend, your friend, so you can have one less thing to bitch about me, and you just want to continue to have something to bitch about me. Help the boy out. That's like secret packs that these ladies have these days. It's amazing. It is just to shit and continue the shit and set us up for failure. I'm sorry after two and a half months. As a man, I'm sorry, what do you think of the, do you think that I'm just out here buying perfume for any girl? You think I'm just out here for my mother being like, hey, she'll want some of this, you know, pink love or some Gucci bonnet or whatever the fuck. Like, I, I don't even know the name of perfumes. You know why? Because I haven't gone to got perfume since that day. Because, you know, I learned a hard lesson. Fuck what you smell like. Maybe that's why I don't really wear cologne. Because that situation like, you know what, fuck it. What's the point of smelling great? What's the point of going through this effort of smelling great? When, I'm sorry after two and a half months, I don't know your social security. I'm sorry after two and a half months, I don't know what really makes you you. So you know what, I just got her a fucking board game. And then after her birthday and shit, like a week after, we need to talk. And then bitch about everything I got for her birthday. Oh, young love. Gotta love it. Sorry, don't mean to get a little flagrant with the fragrance, but, uh, have to do it. It was just the audacity of her fucking, of her friend looking, looking at me with a fucking smug attitude. Like, oh my God, just make a decision. It's like, I'm trying to make a decision by getting information from a close confidant of accurate information. 
And you just want to tell me to go fuck myself. So you have another thing to bitch about in your secret circle, in the break room, in your secret text, when you're just shitting about me because I haven't made a move and taken both our virginities. I'm sorry for being a decent dude at the time, but you know what? Fuck me. But hey, welcome to episode 126 of the Off and Beat Podcast. I'm your host, Clint. And for five minutes in, I haven't done an open like that in a while. Uh, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, follow the podcast on all apps, and most importantly, suck some titties, especially if you sprayed the perfume on her. Uh, but you came the closest to my chest, because <laughs> my heart beat. Uh, yeah, you know, seriously, it don't have to be this difficult. I never understand. I don't understand, like, why getting information... For a person, whether it's a friend, boyfriend, a girlfriend, someone's mother-in-law. Like, look, let me, it's like, I'm going to, if I don't know that person, what do you want me to do? Just get him a generic gift with no specificness? You want just another hand soap from Bath and Body Works? You want just another piece of hand lotion? You want just another fucking half ass decent candle? Like, all right, fine. I go to Yankee Candle. You know what? I'm doing half of the disservice by walking into a Yankee Candle as a man, right? The least you can do is cut the time in half so I'm not here clogging up my nose with all these below average smells and just tell me the type of smells she likes. Don't just assume because I've smelled a lot of good candles. And then you light them up, put some fire on it, let it, and it's like, oh, this doesn't smell well. Sorry I don't have the natural raw smelling of good candles or good lotion or overpriced shampoo, especially for this type of investment where perfume is not always the cheapest. Candles are not always the cheapest. Body washes are not always the cheapest. If I don't know woman products, it's okay. I'm not supposed to know woman products. I don't expect you to go to the store and be able to get me some good body wash that doesn't give me psoriasis or rashes. Be like, hey, what type of body wash you use? Oh, just get some Old Spice, Fiji, whatever the fuck, what type of shampoo you like. Just get some Old Spice, Fiji, <laughs> whatever the fuck. You get what I'm saying here? Or just look at my bathroom. When in doubt, just get what I got previously. Baby, do I smell good? Then get that shit again. It's not that hard. But if I don't know what shit you have that makes you smell good, I'm trying to make sure I'm keeping the smell and repeating. Rinse, smell, repeat. The, the worst, I mean, what? Oh, you get something again that makes you feel, makes you smell good, makes all the guys after me thirst after you? You're welcome. But no, got to make it difficult on the boy. Sorry I got you a fucking book. All right? I'm sorry I got you... I'm sorry, I, all right, it's fine. You want to be difficult? I'm just going to get you random gifts that have nothing to do with you. Just go buy a book. Just go online and be one of those dudes, what to get your girl for Valentine's, what to get your girl for birthday. And then you're just going to get the most generic gifts and not feel special at all. When you know what? I understand it defeats the purpose to just tell someone, I want this. You want a little like thought process. But... You got to give me something to have a thought of. If I know, know much about you, and don't give me that, oh, you gave me subtle hints two weeks into when we started talking. It's like two weeks in, I didn't even know if I wanted to see inside of you. I didn't know if I wanted to take you to Dave and Buster's. I don't know if I want to see the same movie twice at the movie theaters. But guess what? One, by the time I was deep in, like, you know what? I actually may want to see this through. Then that's when I start thinking about you and what really makes you you. All right? It's like, ah, what does she smell like? I'll be the first to admit, I don't remember most girls I've ever, you know, uh, let's just say insinuated the deed with. I don't remember most most of the color of their eyes. Except for one, the one that got away. But other than that, I don't remember most, most of their eyes. The most their eye color. I mean, I know what their faces look like, and you know, I could guess, but off the top of my head, like I don't remember eye colors like that. And I stare at eyes enough to where I should know the eye color. 
But you asked me on the spot, what is this person's eye color? It's like, eh, you know, it's it's either blue, orange, green, red, tomatoes. Um, <laughs> but it's you know, there's certain things I don't pick up unless I make an external effort to make it an attentive attention. That made no fucking sense. Basically, if I try to make it a concerted effort for my attention, then yes. So, you know what? I'm sorry I don't know your favorite book series. I'm sorry I don't know the type of, you know, perfume you wear. Because you're very vague on everything. Alright? I understand. But I also understand. You know, I was just going to sit here tell me, get this, get that. Because that defeats the purpose. But God damn it. If you... if. If I don't, if I, if I try to go through other avenues, and then she's gonna end up telling you what I got you anyways, which she fucking did. But that's cool, you know. Um, what's the whole fucking point? And then laugh about it, like, oh, oh, well, actually, don't be mad, but she told me anyways. Like, well, one, you didn't have to tell me that. I gotta assume she she's gonna tell you shit because I asked her since she fucking worked there. Didn't even give me an employee discount, by the way. It's like you think for your friend, you give me an employee discount, but you know what? Maybe she had some of the background knew I wasn't the guy and she had a side dude. I don't fucking know, but that's cool. Um look. Maybe I wasn't maybe I wasn't considered shit, but all of a sudden now, the same. They consider me a little bit above shit. You know, before I was ever seen Shark Tale, there's fifty feet of shit, fifty feet of poop, and then there's you, Oscar. I think I was where Oscar was at that point. And now I think I'm above that fifty feet. Of shit. And there's somewhere in between there. I don't know. But you know, it's just like help you know, help us out, man. Especially in the young like don't make don't don't be difficult, just be difficult. Alright? Not trying to be uh I'm not I'm not complaining about the ladies. I'm not a complainer, believe it or not. But you know, I, I it's, it's just something about that that really just makes me look back and be like, what like it didn't. It doesn't have to be like this, and I do feel like there are people that get off on just being difficult, just to be difficult. There are people that just want to make things hard on you because they want to be extra chaste. They they just ironically they tell you that you're always the one. It's like seems like you're trying to be chaste. It's like really because it seems like you're trying to freaking marathon sprint away from me every fucking minute of the time when I try to do anything nice. Or try to make time for you. But then you say I'm boring. Which is fine. I get it. I was a young pup. I had none to offer. Which is fine. But. Don't say. You always make me feel like I'm chasing you. When. When I try to chase you. You keep running. To have someone else chase you. Uh, Zoe 101. Because I'm all about the chase. Alright Clint. Uh. Nothing like uh, recycling jokes. I probably said like episode eight of this podcast. Got to keep it moving. But yeah, look, it. All I was trying to do is get something a little bit more mature. And I think perfume's a mature thing. Like hmm, maybe I'll smell her neck after I get her this. Never got close to her neck ever again, which is fine. But it's like, all right. I was trying. I was trying to be a little bit more. Uh, mature in my process of getting you some. I'm sorry my 290 buck a week check from McDonald's wasn't, you know, killing it for you, all right? I'm sorry that, you know, my uh, my offerings at the time were slim, even though I'm pretty sure I put more effort in my shit than the bullshit you got me. But it's cool. It's crazy, though. They'll, they'll, they'll bitch about the effort you put in their joke. Then the shit they get you, you're like... You literally just got me a random shirt because it had my favorite color on it. That had nothing to do with anything I actually fucking enjoy. And nothing's worse, by the way, to the ladies out there. Do not get me something to make me, quote unquote, look more formal. Or how you would want me to look dress, wearing dress shit. Like wearing nicer clothing when I told you. I don't care to wear nicer clothes. Don't give me something because you want to see me a certain way. Because that's more like... Because you're really just giving me something that you want to see me in. But then you want me to get you something that you want to see yourself in. That I don't give a fuck. If you... 
if I want to see you in there or not. Like, this shit's not hard. I know I keep on saying this shit's not hard, but I know all these young men, all these young pups are going through it right now. If they're being difficult, just be difficult. Tell them to kick rocks, football head. Um, uh, This orange cream ghost energy drink is fucking amazing. Not going to lie to you. Now, see, ladies. See, if this was available in 2014, you could have got me this. You could have got me a four pack of that. It would have been better than anything you've ever done or gotten from me. But it's cool. Um, <laughs> this sounds like it's not even about purpose. But I'm using that situation to kind of make a bigger point that I guess I see out there. Young love is a beautiful thing. It's full of naivety. It's full of insecurities. It's full of just, I don't give a fuck how we look. I don't care how idiotic we look. Just love me, baby. Um, but... There is still, sometimes, like, when you get older and you see it, you see a lot of, like, man, this kid's about to get his heart broken. You just see, you just see 18, 19 year old little, little guy. I say little guy when they're still, like, 5 foot, 11, 6 foot, but little guy. They're dating girl around the same age, and you just see, like, oh, it's a shame when, you know, he fucks her sister in four months. It's a shame. Because he really loves this girl. He just doesn't know how to do it. He just doesn't know how to deal with it. And, you know, it, it's some, and honestly, I don't even think this has, I think, honestly, a lot of the same mentality of people that have that age of 18, for some reason, still carry that to older. Because I've seen it firsthand. Where they, where people think that, I, my theory is people that are the most difficult just to be difficult. And I think there's a difference between having standards. There's a different thing between having expectations. And people that are being difficult, when to be honest, if you weren't difficult, there would be nothing to work towards with you. And I think that's actual internal fear. They're like, well, if I'm not difficult and I'm easy, there's really nothing there. It's like, well, it's not about being easy or being difficult. It's just call like, stop. Is There's no need to be a pain in the ass. I'm not your fucking babysitter. You're not my babysitter. Me just creating problems and you just creating unhappiness as a roadblock to our eternal love is just unnecessary. And I'm fucking, and obviously I don't have these problems anymore. At the time, it was, it never really was like someone, oh my God. But it was something at the time. I was just like, well, all right, well, fuck you. Fuck me. I was go fuck myself. Um... And it was just like, you know, they say they say your first they say your first love or not even your first love, but the first like quote unquote, I guess real relationship you have. They always say that it will literally define and dictate the rest of your dating history because that will always be a reference point for something, whether it's the best or the worst or whatever. Because there's always an attachment, for better or worse, that you have to your first girlfriend or first boyfriend or everything in between. Where it's this thing where even if it wasn't great, even if it wasn't even like really some of substance, even if it wasn't really anything of remembrance, there's always that thing where you're like, you know, maybe if we would have met nine, ten years later where we're completely different people and all this shit. And you know what? Maybe, if you did, maybe it could go different. Maybe your perspective, you've you've been through the ringer. You actually have a better idea of what you want. It's not this blame game of making someone feel worse and trying to fight back and all this shit all the time. I guess like, you know what? All this shit's not that big of a deal. But at the same time, it could also be Actually, it doesn't matter. Actually, it could be the if we were to meet now, I would actually want nothing to do with you in my life. It could be that way too. Could be like, oh, all these things that I accepted or rationalized at the age of 18 because I thought, oh, there's ups and downs, there's this and that. And then you get older, 
You've been with some, you've been with some of the ladies, you've been through some situations, and then you get to a point where you're just cool, you're in a good place, you have a better idea of what's important to you and what's not, and then you see, and then you see like, oh, huh, it's like, I want absolutely fuck it, I would want nothing to do with that today, like, I wouldn't even entertain even Going out with them. I wouldn't even entertain hanging out with them. I honestly don't even think I'm attracted to this person. Any capacity in life. Not like old feelings. Like I literally don't have a feeling towards you. If I were to completely meet you as a stranger today. With the qualities you inherit. That are really not that much different than. To now. And I'm speaking generally here. Because I think a lot of people relate to this as you get older. Uh, Not that I'm that old. But you know. But the age of 18 was such a beautiful, you know, I look back, right, and I'm not someone to live in the past, like, I'm not thinking about the age of 18 all the time, but it is something, like, I think of, like, comparing similar situations I was in then compared to how life is now, whether it's situations, um, my personal life, my job status, my financial, all the shit, career-wise and all that. You think about, like, where you were then and now. Because sometimes, you know, you need a little perspective. Sometimes you need, like, you think you're not doing this and be like, well, I'm in a much better place than I was then. I have a much healthier relationship with a lot of different things in life. I am I actually have a reliable transportation and don't get shit in on it. And don't get shit on it all the time either. This is also a weird thing when it, when someone shits on you for not having something at the age of 18. And I keep on using that reference very specifically, but look, it's a real thing. At the age of 18, 19, someone shits on you for not having a car when the car they have was literally passed down to them. And I don't care. I'm not one of these people like, oh, you had such an event. You just had a car. It's like, you know what? Good for you. I'm not one of these people like, hey, I was like, well, I mean, I don't know, like, I'm working towards it, I'm trying, I'm going to school, this and that, but somehow I get shitted on it. And it becomes this buffer of, which should have been a sign of me, one, and it kind of it kind of exposed a lot of things to me about the person where it's like, oh, you really held on to this because... You, you lived in such this fantasy man thing, which I get it, where the optics, you wanted the optics of a guy taking you on a date instead of understanding like, hey, look, this is my situation. I'm working towards whatever. Instead of shitting on me, making me feel bad for not having a car for two months we're dated, and then made it like a burden if, God forbid, I met you somewhere. Not even you pick me up. If I just met you, like, hey, look, you don't have to pick me up. I'll just meet you somewhere, right? I get it. We can still do the whole thing, thing, whatever. And it's still a problem. And that should have told me, like, oh, this person cares so much about something looks, the optics of the situation, more than actual the person. And you just want, and you kind of enjoyed the fact that you had one advantage over me when the rest of your qualities were very below average. And it's so weird when people come from such great homes and great families. And they are such entitled pieces of shit without realizing they're entitled pieces of shit. And people think just because you work hard, quote unquote, that you make money at a certain point in time and all this stuff. That you are not entitled. Being entitled is more than just. Oh working for your money. Or not working for your money. Whatever. Being entitled is a much deeper. It's about all the smaller things. It's about really feeling like you're above things. When you haven't even accomplished the thing. To feel like you're above it. You know. And. There's this thing in that car situation. Fun fact: I didn't get my first car till the age of 21, right? A little late than most people, but I can tell you one thing: since the age of 21, I've never not had a vehicle. So whatever you want, to make it. When I bought a car, I made sure I had money to fix it, 
And I've kept everything up to date. I've bought a fairly newer vehicle ever since. And life's been all right. And they have lawsuits. Um, they have lawsuits for terrible wrecks. They have bad credit. Um, they still owe me money for rent. 3000 bucks. fun fact. Um, but you know what? This isn't about an individual. I just kind of threw some shots in there. But you know what? If they ever want to come out and blame me for shit, just know I got the receipts. Um, and it's, it's this weird and it's this weird only think of yourself type of mentality, and it, it really showed me like, oh, this person wasn't really even into me like that. They were more into um. One, I believe proximity is the biggest factor in who you date and who you are interested in at the time. And what's fascinating to me is that when I saw like, oh, there's a lot of weird, they they hide behind, and people hide behind this thing where it's this heavy, I'm not, it's like, I don't care about this, that, and the other. I'm all about genuineness and honesty and shit like this. But then the way you act... Hmm. You shame me for not having a vehicle at such a young age. You, you, you make me. You wouldn't be a pain in the ass over nothing. Because if you weren't a pain in the ass, you probably wouldn't feel like you're something worth chasing for. Which is why no one actually chases after you. Because after a while, shit gets old. I hate to say, it, not say anyone. If you like, there, there's a fine like little game of chasing. But at a certain point. If you're not at least letting me, you know, get the baton, at least, you know, let me pull back the Hain paintings, a, li- a little bit, at least a tease with some realness in it. Like, after a while, the, the whole chasing thing gets old, which is why when people, this is why when I get, I've been accused of this once by this one individual recently who's been trying to get back in my life. And I really don't give a shit to get back in their life. Um, because uh, that, that situation really exposed me. Because the difference between her and another girl individual who I have the most utmost respect for, even though we're not together. She's still a, one of the most respectful people I've ever met in my life. Other than my mother, she is the best woman I've ever met in my life. Um, and the, the, see the compare and contrast, even though it was years later. And honestly, without this woman, I probably would not have gotten a car, at least at that age, because I didn't have my license at the time. Fun fact as well. And without this lady, this lovely lady, um, without, she treated me completely different. She did not care. She wanted to be around me for me. And instead of bitching about Instead of bitching and making me feel bad for not having a vehicle, to see how at any moment just to be where she would come pick me up. And, a lot, and trust me, I didn't feel comfortable with that. I would try to find a way, get an Uber, meet her place. I would even tell her no because I would feel bad. Pay her gas, whatever. But she never made me feel like shit for it. She never even made jokes about it and shit like that. And she actually let me use her car to get, she let me use her car to get a license. So I could take my driving test, get the license, and then like a month later, I bought my first car. And without her, and the difference between see her, and the first, and to see the compare and contrast of how two people can treat you different in a situation. Something as simple as that makes me look at those two people completely different. Yeah, that's some real shit. And I'm, I I typically don't like to get that person. I'm going to leave their names out. Um, and I'm totally not one to really talk about. Per- but it's something like this recently in my life. When, when when you see how one person wants to get back in your life. When life's not going the way they quote unquote planned it. Let's just say. And the other person who's actually doing well for themselves. Is actually, you see the change in their happiness, and they see, 
you know, you actually give a fuck about because of everything that person has actually treated you well. It's two complete rationales of how they treat you when you didn't have much to offer. And that's why and that's why when I tell you guys, and I'm not a preacher here, but I do reach and I'm a little jack. Um <laughs> It doesn't matter how someone treats you when you have nothing or very little to offer. Doesn't mean you're not trying nothing, but, you know, everyone goes through times, right? That's why I'm not someone that shits on people who don't have certain things or who could be doing better for themselves, but they haven't yet. They haven't figured out some stuff. Like, I get it. But, because my experience is very different. In that sense, it's like this one person's being extra difficult and taking advantage of the fact that I don't have much to offer, taking advantage of my kindness at the time, my naivety at the time, because I wasn't very well versed with the ladies, I guess. Now, the audacity to be a pain in the ass just to be a pain in the ass, and then a complete nine day compared to the next to the other girl who a couple years later I, w- I met and was with, and the complete compare contrast. Of how they treated the same situation, treat me. It, it, yeah, it exposed me to a lot more. Like, wow. Like, you don't have to feel bad about yourself because you don't. It's like, because if someone wants to be around you, it's not that difficult. If someone really wants to make time for you and spend time with you, it's honestly really not that difficult. Obviously, different times in life, but you get young, whatever. And so, and I get it, people are complicated, and people are also behind behind the, well, I'm so, and they'll hide behind you just can't handle me. It's like you know what, fine, you're right. Maybe just because someone, first of all, and just because, uh, just a little reality check, just because someone can't handle you doesn't mean they want to actually fucking deal with that bullshit. And it's not that someone can't handle you; they're just fucking annoyed by your bullshit. Being the person that quote unquote can't be handled is not a badge of honor. It's really not. Because the neg- the fine line between can't and can't is domestic violence. I hate to break it to you. I hate to break it to most people. Um, the only difference between, oh yeah, you can't handle me. And you push a man to the edge. He's like, fuck it. And you're OJ. All right. Obviously, that's extreme. But to be honest, you push that line. You do not know what you're going to get out of someone. You push someone to the limits. You still don't know what the fuck people. Every person is capable of really bad shit. Even myself. And I'm a child god. Uh, but, but, but kind of back to the theme. Flagrant with the fragrance. And, you know... I guess what really is the most fascinating aspect, and I don't mean to go about the whole pot about this, but I don't know what else I want to talk about in this episode. I just want to tell people, being difficult is not a badge of honor. Being difficult is not something to be proud of. That doesn't mean we don't have difficult things about us that shouldn't be understood. That doesn't mean that people have trauma and there's difficult things to understand about that. I get it. But being outright difficult, because you always feel like people got to prove something to you to make to make people feel like you're this prize, when it's like, no offense, we both work at McDonald's. No one's looking at us as a Happy Meal, okay? Like, there's a reason, like, they wouldn't get toys in there. Like, there's not even a toy in around, unless you want to make a little one to get a little toy. Um, it just... You know, and to see, and you know, and I'm not, and to me, I'm not in the business, I'd never compare or contrast any exes, because I'm not a believer in that, I, like, if I'm currently with a girl, I never compare it to an ex, because I believe you kind of accept an individual for who they are, make your judgments, and work with that, that's just me, right, I'm not, I'm not into the, Oh, she doesn't do this like this girl. She she's not like this. This and that. Oh Jesus, she's not like. 
or you know I, I i i'm not really a fan of that shit it's like you know what you made a choice to pursue a girl you made a choice to be with that girl or guy whatever it's like there's certain things you can make mindful of shit but you know you're not really going to change someone the way you think you do and if you change someone how you met them you you may change them into a person that loses all the elements of what you actually kind of like them for so you might want to be careful about that um and if you could easily change someone like that is that really someone you want to be with someone who has no conviction or reality and fine you know what one thing i'll say is when i was like 18 or nine, like you know what i didn't know anything so i was very like I, my my i was always trying to bring solutions to a problem that i realized the problem was just kind of they had all these problems and they just kind of wanted someone to put their problems on and blame the other person for why they're unhappy. Like, you know what? You're unhappy and you're bored? Then fucking leave me. Don't wait till your birthday or Valentine's so you can get some gifts and then dip. But look, it's the game. It's cool. It's youth. It's being young. And I don't shit on people for it. That's why I don't shit on young people for being in these situations. But look, man... I don't care what people tell you, guy or girl. If, if they're ever difficult just to be difficult, tell them to get the fuck over themselves. Because that's honestly what a lot of people need. Get the fuck over yourself. You're not that goddamn special. Like, your aspirations are not really aspirational. You're not really doing anything all day. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, just like fucking just just give me a decent perfume. I don't even care. But oh, well, you know, it's got to match, you know, their body complexion, their skin, all this stuff. You know, not every just because some smells good. doesn't mean going to smell good on this person. It's like, OK, but if you know that, then pick the ones that you think would smell good on your friend, because if she smells good on her to you, it's going to smell good on to me. And then you could bitch about how good she smells. And then you could take the credit because you picked it out anyways. But you know what you did? You didn't pick the 28 bucks out of my account to pick it. No, that was me. So you know what? You don't get credit. Whoever puts the money in it gets the fucking credit. If I go to a store and get a recommendation of, hey, what kind of good foot massage water machines do you have? This one. Am I, does the lady at Bed Bath & Beyond, does she deserve 100% of the credit? It's like, no, because I still spent 90 bucks on that shit for it to vibrate on my lady's legs. It's just, uh, shit agitates me, man. It's just, it's just the unwarranted ego for me. It's, uh, oh, it's the ego for me. No, it's the unwarranted fucking ego. And honestly, looking back, it's more like a for their incompetencies, they wanted to double down on whatever my incompetency was at the time, just to kind of make themselves feel better because they wanted to be, they wanted they envisioned a guy to be like this and that, and okay, fine, whatever. And now, when you have moved on in life, none, and all of a sudden now they want to. To snatch you back. Never shit. And it's just like, you know what? No. I, I, I'm i good. I, I really want nothing to do with you. Because what is it now about? Like, you really think like now, six or what, what, eight years later? Yeah, about right. Eight years. You really think eight years later? How much different? Like, people are different. But... They're still the same in most reasonable ways. Like you really think my you really think if your complaint was that you were bored. The only thing that's different is I have a vehicle and I have a little means of something and good credit score. Um you really think like I'm that much different? Do you really fucking think that I'm that much different? And this is to anyone. Do you really think that when you're trying to get back with someone eight years later? Or however long. And your reasons like you see them doing well. 
you see them in a certain light now, you think they've changed, you really think your situation going to be that much different? Like, you think all of a sudden, I'm just going to be taking you to some fucking nightclub in Atlanta and shooting it up? You really think I'm going to sit there and just have you grind on my khaki pants? No. Because you're not even into that shit. And maybe I do go do that shit. But not with you. It's livid. Oh, Jesus. But things change. Things change. But you really think, like, my humor is different? You really think... Honestly, you really think, like, I'm so much more exciting? You really think I'm going to start taking you to places where they're $90 plates? It's like, no. You're going to get the chili treatment. And... It, it's more like it's this thing where they're trying to come back into a life because they they get like they had this idea that they're the ones who like deserve to be made up to like like oh hey look i see that you're starting to fix some things i'm ready to invite you back in my life it's like but i don't want to be invited back you can actually push the invite Send it in an envelope, send it to hell, re you know, reroute it somewhere else. Like, I'm good. It's not even a hatred thing, honestly. It's really it's it's really someone the more you think about someone, like wh- what is your reasoning for wanting to have any capacity back in my life? What is it? Like, you were bored. My life now is I do this, my podcast, multiple times a week. That's time consuming. I have a job where I work 50 hours a week. I have my writing. That's been all my other free time on. What do you think I'm going to do with you? You think I'm spending my hard-earned money to take you out? Because things didn't work out for you when you fucked me over, when you moved out? Of our apartment with your bum ass scrub friends. Leaving all the trash behind. And they sent me a $200 thing that you still fucking have to pay. And I'm only comfortable saying because I've told them about this at a point in time. They fucked me over. And the fact that they want to ignore this shit. I don't give a fuck. They can have it. It's like no you're going to pay that shit. And you can consider like a debt towards the three to four thousand dollars you owe me a rent. That you and your bum ass friends trashed that place, smoked weed all the fucking time, brought a Michael Vick type of dog where I opened the door one day and it came attacking at me and I closed the door because I had an attack dog in my own fucking apartment when I was working 18 fucking hours a day. So the fucking audacity of these entitled cunts that explains the bigger point of view here. Is the entitlement is beyond me. It's be honestly, it's beyond entitlement. And it, it, it's that situation right there, what it exposed to me, and honestly, it exposed me on a bigger level. And all this was triggered because I got a I got a piece in the mail the other day about an old apartment that I lived with this person for a period of time. We weren't together at the time, but I was like, you know what? Once together, maybe just roommates. I need a I wanted to move out, place a, and then I was working shitload. They were working a job. Cool. Then a couple months in, they quit that job inexplicably to fucking pick a job that was quote unquote entrepreneurship bullshit, but it doesn't pay. But you're working 17 hours a day, but it doesn't pay. Doesn't sound like a great trade off to me um, because it was so much more into the fantasy aspect. Then they were. Then they try to move out with like four months left on the lease, I believe. Like, hey, you know, it's like, it like that's not how this works. You can't just leave, and if you have, you've already missed half of the rent as you've lived here now. They're not gonna just give you the benefit of the doubt, and don't say you're gonna move away, but still send me money. It's like you haven't even done it when you're 15 feet away from where I fucking sleep. Like, this shit's not fucking hard. No. And of course they still didn't pay. They left like a 
three days before the final day. They left the place. They quote unquote packed their shit. And then they left the place. They had to fucking sit there and deep clean like a fucking maid for seven hours. And I tried to clean so much shit, but they fucked up so much shit. I can only do so much. And then still got like some cleaning $700 fee that I paid a portion of. And they're going to pay the rest. But it's shit like that. There's a sense of, regardless of all that, you would think they would, you just going to come back into my life and just pretend like, hey, I know I tried to ban it, but now that I'm back, you know, I like to meet up and maybe we could rekindle something. Like, no, fuck you. You could rekindle $4,000 in my bank account. How's that sound? Oh, no, we don't want to responsibility and accountability way too much. But yet, when I didn't have a car, uh, it was my responsibility to figure that shit out at the age of 18 or 19. Cool, though. You had no solutions. And you didn't know my personal situation. But it was my responsibility and accountability to shit on me for what I didn't have. Well, you know what? If you don't have the money, I guess I should just shit on you for what you don't have. Yeah, that's just, yeah, that would suck, wouldn't it? But you know what? I guess about being the bigger person. But you know what? It's honestly beyond being the bigger person. It is simply about just don't be that person. Lead by example. I'm not a believer just because someone fucks you over that gives you a right to do the same thing to the next person. I'm not a believer that if someone cheats on you, you're going to double it down and create this cycle to justify you recreating the same behaviors if that's not what you believe in. I'm not a believer because some person you were with fucked you over. You should do that to every person because you just think that's the way it is. I'm not going to let that shitty situation dictate how I view woman and all. And I know I was... I made a big deal about, oh, her friend made me, like, yeah, that's a personal situation, but I don't, I don't, I haven't carried that anywhere else. It's just kind of like, whatever. I blame myself for a lot of that shit for even letting it get to that point. But you know what? Youth. It's just funny, like the, but I I guess the main thing I'm trying to, I I guess the main thing that I kind of want to, I guess, make it a bigger emphasis is that there's a lot of. Um, the lack of awareness and the lack of a self accountability as someone gets older is mind blowing. Like it's like certain things you just want to put under the rug and act like it didn't happen, and just say, "Hey, I made mistakes." Like, yeah, but you don't get to just come back to the place where you shat and be like, "Hey, sorry for shitting on you." We cool though. Here, here's some baby wipes. Like, no, fuck you. It's just, uh, like, ignoring the fact of what that situation may have put you in the time, left you out the dry and fuck, and then they want to come and try to rekindle something, then I have the audacity to have a fucking attitude with you, because there's a dialogue between you two about nothing. They have no conversation skills because they have this expectation that it's always someone else's. It's always, quote unquote, the guy's responsibility to carry fucking everything, even their lack of personality, even their lack of versatility in the subjects that they actually can talk about, their lack of actual opinion about shit, their lack of anything of actual substance. And they accuse you of, quote unquote, why does I always feel like I'm chasing you? Well, you know what? If anyone deserves to be chased in our situation, you goddamn right it's me. Chase me, ho. And you know what? Why you at it? Give me a bottle of cologne. And when you ask for a recommendation, I hope they tell you, I don't know, figure it out. You know what? You want to make it up? Buy me a bottle of just decent cologne. Of one that I would actually like the smell of. Not the one that you like the smell of. Or... You would buy me it, and I'll just let another lady smell it for you, and let them give you the rave review. Which, by the way, leave a podcast review on Apple Podcasts. Um, leave four or five stars, preferably five. 
Um, it just, uh, it really, you know, it's just the bullshit of the fragrance of spraying in the air. It's so flagrantly, egregiously disrespectful. Like, they really think that the shit they spray is like, yeah. It's like, yeah, this this is great. Th- yeah, this is great. You're actually, ca- you're actually causing cancer to me, but it's cool. I don't know, man. Uh, all I'm going to say is uh, from whether you're 18, whether you're 38, whether you're 47... Look how someone, it's not about, it's not that someone has to treat you better than the world. It's not about that. It's not that someone has to treat you better than where you're at. But goddamn, they shouldn't treat you worse than where you're at. And they also should be realistic with, it's funny how age expectations mattered at such a young age. But then when you get older, they don't want the age expectations to matter to them. Because then it doesn't work in their favor. You, you notice how people are always obsessed with where you should be by a certain age. When they're either at what quote unquote societal age expectations for things. But then when life hits them hard, shit happens. They're like, you know what? That stuff doesn't really matter. It shouldn't matter. It's Because of all I can do, I can cook this I can cook some tacos. I could cook. It's like, oh, great. You can fucking put some beef in a pan and let it cook until it gets a little darker and brown. Oh, and you could, you know, put a tortilla on a fucking pan for six seconds for it to get a little crusty. Oh, you can buy some shredded lettuce, pre-shredded cheese, pre-cut tomatoes. Oh, maybe you have to cut the tomatoes. Maybe some sour cream and you have to put a spoon Oh, God, we got fucking a chef over here. We got fucking, what is it, Contessa on the Food Network. We got Rachel Ray here. Watch out. They want exp- People want expectations lowered for them when it's convenient, but then want to raise expectations when it actually comes to, you know, trying to be mindful and accepting of people's situations at the time. And it's just fucking wild to me. And again, I'm not trying to compare and contrast individuals. But see how one person has treated me when I had, when I had a when I had a lot more than I do now. And they still treat me the same today when I met up with them recently. And it doesn't matter to them. They so and it doesn't because I display that it doesn't matter to me whether you have this amount of money or if you're doing great obviously i want to see you doing great but i'm not going to treat you different it doesn't matter to me what car it that's just me and maybe that's because i come from that that situation really totally more than anything obviously great family shit but like that situation that first girlfriend situation really taught me what i don't want and it more importantly taught me how not to treat someone more than anything and that you know what because your first experience can really fuck up your perception of what people, of what girls want, all that shit. And it could work the other way. Like, it really fucks up your... If you date the wrong person first, it could fuck up your whole lineage of what you think about guys and girls for the next eight years of your life. And you date wrong people. You may have kids with someone's the wrong person because you fall for certain qualities. You're told in your first relationship, this is not how this is supposed to be done. And you actually believe that shit. But I was very good, for better or worse, because I'm so goddamn stubborn in a lot of ways. And then I was just like, this doesn't seem right. This doesn't seem fair. This doesn't seem like this is a really fair situation. And of course, it was confirmed that it's not when I was with the actual love of my life, one that got away. And, And I was with her... None of that shit mattered. Because I think we both come from very similar situations. We come from good families. Maybe not always have the most financially provide. But you understand there's more to actual providing and love than just money. 
And not even that the first person comes from money, but there's certainly the sense of entitled that I'll be fine. One day someone, you know what, I'll be fine. I'll be taken care of one way or another, no matter what decision I make. Where me and this other girl, I think we have more of an understanding. It's like, we, we on our own, baby. Um, <laughs> but there's also this real genuineness with that person. And a real respect between us. And it's not just being difficult just to be difficult. It's just like, yeah, I understand. You don't have to explain to me. Like, I understand. And I I respect that individual. And I always will. Just for the origin fact of that. Compared to the first person. That thank God that I didn't let that warp my point of view type of shit and i don't know and i i think there's the only reason why i share that is because i think i think there's a lot to do because as a dude look you want to be able to drive your girl like i get it at that but at that age it's like look shit happens some people don't have certain advantages by certain ages and that's fine um but uh, what it does show is one person is literally going to hold something against me and let that be a factor of whether to be seen in public with me, whether to treat me different because of it. And the other person is just like, it don't matter to me. I just want to be around you because it's you, not everything else around it that I care about. And... I think that's just naturally like I will always be more attracted to that. I will always care more for that no matter how well off I am. I know one day I'm going to have a lot of fucking money. This podcast is going to blow the fuck up. Someone's going to clip this episode. They're going to try to track down the one that got away. And we might be married by then. Who knows? She may be married uh, with me. But she ain't going to marry me. Um. Not only her daddy giving her away. That's a really sad song, Marry Me by Thomas Rhett. I remember that that's like one of the first songs that got me into country music. Even though it's technically probably not really country, but he's a country artist. And it's a song Marry Me. It's like, oh, the lyrics got to me. And is she's gonna get married. She wants a perfect, she wants a granddaddy. Preaching the service. She wants magnolias out in the country. Give it daddies. And it's something about her daddy ain't gonna be the only one giving her away. Which basically mean, you know, daddy's, her daddy's giving her down the aisle. You know, giving his daughter away to this guy. And he's not the only one giving her away. Because him by default. Because he's not the other guy. He's, lo- he's losing her on a wedding day. Oh, man, that's a deep song. That may be me one day. But I can tell you I'm not going to marry the first girl. Um, <laughs> and this isn't like, I don't want to be like, I don't think she's a bad person, even though I just talked about a situation for 50 plus minutes that led to something that I had no clue was going to lead there. But, um, and I, but I think uh, you got to be, uh, I don't know. Oh, yeah, she's not... I don't think that person's a bad person. I think they've grown in a lot of ways, too. But at the same time, it's certain things that stick out like, oh, you're still really... You you may only want to be around me now because I have everything that I didn't have to offer at the time. Which at the age of 18, 19, that shouldn't be this crazy expectation. If I was truly someone you genuinely actually wanted to be with at the time. Realistically, you just probably don't have it for me. You're probably not, attra- you probably weren't, and you probably not attracted to me. And that's okay, but don't hide it behind, you know, because it was a circumstance. All this. It's like the circumstances wasn't really the problem. Circumstances obviously play a factor. I get it, timing and life shit. But it doesn't take you eight years to figure out what the fuck you want with someone. Eight, eight years... Of not being with someone or being around someone in capacity doesn't really change. Um, eight years, it doesn't really like. If you didn't have for someone eight years ago, it doesn't take you eight years to figure out, like, actually, I think I do. Because to me, it's more like, oh, 
you're selling because all the things you thought you wanted, they didn't want you. So you're selling for something that you still don't really fully believe, but you know will accept you. And that's kind of my view when people come back to someone in that period of time. I'm not saying people that have separated for brief periods of time can't make it. Like, But like eight, nine years type of shit, like, and you don't really associate like that. No real, real consistent. Like, I just like, to me, I think you're just kind of being with someone at that point just because you just kind of want to be with someone. Um, but yeah, yeah, um, I guess, you know, the moral of the story, more of everything in this episode, one, if you go to get a girl perfume, you don't know what to get, just fucking get some shit and tell it to shove it up her ass if she doesn't like it. Um, don't go through her friends apparently, because apparently, Unless she actually has normal friends about like, yeah, you know what? I'll actually, I'll help you out. Let's make this easy for you. And I won't tell her. I'll actually just be like, hey, I'm going to help you out. Like, it's hard getting gifts for people that you just kind of met, not really been together that long. Let me help you out. I understand. Like, but no, people, people uh, you know, it's this weird propensity. We just want people to figure us out. We just want people to be mind fucking readers and think that just subtle hints once every three and a half weeks of saying a clue and having no conversations in general. And then you expect me to figure out when you don't engage in any real conversation. Like, all right, you know what? You do that shit. Chances are, if you're not engaging in conversations with me or anyone or whoever the person is, you probably don't really care to conversate with that person. And that's okay. But then don't sit here and say it's for me to figure you out. That's a you problem. All right. Oh, and most importantly, if you don't have a car as a guy or a girl, and that's the excuse that someone makes to not be with you or hang out with you or treat you less than, and they kind of hold that as like a weird hostage thing. Let me just tell you, they don't really like you. Because someone really likes you, and they're not understanding of your situation, whatever your situation is, and they make great judgments and all that shit, and make you feel bad about it all the time, instead of actually maybe helping you if they actually give a shit. Not saying pay for it, but like, they're not actually like, you know, trying to help you look for a vehicle. Like, hey, you know what, I'll drive you out to go look at vehicles today. You know, stuff like that. Like, if you're not trying to get towards a solution of whatever problem you're complaining about, then don't bitch about the fucking problem if it's not your problem. If you don't want to be part of someone's life that has a, that has that quote unquote issue, then you have a choice not to be a part of it. All right, but don't sit here and use that as a hostage, and then just have that in your back pocket to use against someone. It's like, all right, you know what? That's fine. So if someone ever uses that against you, whether you're young or old, let me just tell you. Um. They don't really want to hang out or be around you like that. Not just my experience, because I've seen it firsthand. I've seen people treat people less than a certain age for not having a car for a period of time. And when I say that, it's like, oh, so you are only cool with that person when it's convenient. But so, yeah, if uh, if you don't have a car for a period of time and they don't want to be around you, more than likely, it's probably because kind of jackasses and they probably don't they're probably not really cool with you like you thought they were but yeah all right this is episode 126 flagrant with a fragrance and don't forget to follow the podcast on all apps and suck some titties even that's where she sprayed the perfume that you got and their friend told them anyways god i really need to start getting the funny back in this pod this pod is getting too inceptual Starting to get a little too sentimental, too real. But, hey, what are you going to do? All right, guys, have a great day whenever this is posted. I'm going to try to post four episodes this week. This one being the one on the weekend. The rest are nine to five. This is the weekend. All the blinding lights.